What's going on everybody? So in this video, we're gonna be uh, making this car roadworthy again, whatever it's gonna take here. So we got some suspension work still to do. Um, I just did get that new bushing pressed in. I'll show you guys that in a sec. So I got a new bushing since I killed the old one and uh, I ended up pressing the old one out and pressing the new one in and everything went well. It was pretty difficult, but got it in there. So we're good to go on that. And we're ready to install this final coil over right here. So I'm pumped about that. We're actually gonna be able to get this thing on the ground probably tomorrow. It's pretty late at night and the clocks are going ahead tonight. So we're losing an hour. So it's already midnight, but I'm gonna go ahead and try to throw this coil in there, the last one, and throw the wheel on. And then I got a little bit of wiring to do. I'll see if I can finish that up tonight. And then tomorrow it should just be uh, setting ride height stuff and then I should be able to take it for a rip tomorrow. That's the goal um, I think it's supposed to snow in the morning and stuff. So hopefully uh, maybe in the afternoon It'll be cleared up and I can uh, take this thing for a ride. But yeah, so Got some new ideas about the battery too. I got to do that this ground I think I actually want to run this guy through a little plug in the trunk here and Actually connected to the frame underneath the trunk. I think that'll actually be a better ground than the strut tower up there that I was going to go for. And then I also won't have to worry about, uh, you know, when I want to take the strut out, having the ground come off and stuff like that. Like, I think it'll just be better to go underneath. But yeah, let me show you guys right here. Um, that is the new bushing. This one right here. That's our bushing right there. Press that thing in and it's looking good. I've covered our light, but yeah, looks much better. It's, uh, you know, it's doing good in there. I'm happy I got that thing in there. That was a real pain. All right, so we have our coilover installed and we are ready to go. We're tightened down everywhere. So just ready to uh, throw the wheel back on. And then I'm gonna go ahead and plug that wire in that you see on the ground there. I got a little surprise for you guys, but uh, you have to wait until the next couple of clips to see it. I might show you in this clip once the car's all on the ground, but I'll show you uh, the little surprise. But yeah, so we are good to go for tonight, I think. I'm gonna go to bed, because it's getting late. And I'll try to get an early start on this thing tomorrow. Just gotta finish up the wiring and uh, wire in the surprise, and then uh, we'll be, be good to go. All right, guys, so it's the following day, and I have the battery on charge here, just because it's been disconnected for a while but it's honestly didn't lose much charge so that's pretty good but I got our fuses hooked up with the covers on it I might throw a couple of zip ties or some tape on it just to make sure the cover doesn't come off and short out um, all my battery connections are tight I have the positive all hooked up and I decided to run the fuel pump which is that white wire there the one that I have for the constant power for my fuel pump relay if you haven't seen that video and you're curious about uh, basically hot wiring your fuel pump to get it more voltage with a thicker wire. This is even better because the battery's in the back now and we have a really short amount of wire. So we're gonna get really good voltage to our fuel pump. So I decided to run that wire directly from the battery. Um, so that wire is right there. And then for the ground I have running, I actually drilled a hole. I have a grommet there, but it doesn't quite fit. So I gotta figure out something to keep the wire from chafing, but it is a ground. So if it does chafe through, it's not the end of the world because you know it needs to be grounded anyway. But if you look underneath here, this is where I have this uh, ground cable. And what I did was I used some battery sealer on it just to keep it from corroding. So that should be pretty good. But I went right into the frame there with a nice 14 millimeter bolt, big ring terminal. And I think we should be pretty good there. Um, I don't think it'll corrode or anything like that. And that's definitely going to give us a solid ground for our battery. And I did also get the other strut uh, coil over set up in there and tighten down. So we are basically ready to throw the wheel back on. And I wanna make one more adjustment with that exhaust hanger. You may or may not be able to see it down there, but I'm gonna get rid of that hanger because it's the lowest point of the car. And uh, we're gonna see, yeah, uh, I don't know. Maybe the exhaust is too low right there, that bend. So we're gonna have to see what the lowest point of the car is and where a good ride height is. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and throw the wheel on and get this thing off of jack stands. So we can finally get this thing on the ground and see what it's looking like all laid out like this.
All right, guys, so I did get the car fully on the ground, and now it's time for the big surprise that I was talking about. I'll show you guys that in one second, but this thing is slammed. These function and form type two coilovers absolutely slammed the crap out of this car, um, which is cool as heck, like I love it, but it's, it's definitely too low. And you know, I'll show you guys right now what it's looking like. It's amazing, but uh, it's too low, I think. <laughs> so in the back, we got like a ton of tuck. On this side, the uh, fender measurement is actually 23 and a quarter. Um, so that's pretty low. And then coming up into the front area here, we're more at 24. So we're three quarters of an inch lower in the back and you can tell we're almost tucking, if not tucking a, a half of an inch up front. And then in the back, we're tucking like quite a bit. Um, probably about three quarters of an inch or an inch and a half of, of tuck there, which is too much, I think. So back's gonna have to come up. Uh, I don't see any major clearance issues. See if you guys can see. Um, not too bad underneath the car where we got pretty good gap everywhere but my mud flap is like two inches from the ground up here. So that's pretty close. I don't know if that's gonna fly. Probably rip it off on a speed bump, so I don't know. Definitely the back's gonna come up to meet the front, and then I might take it for a test drive and see how well it does at that ride height, and then I'll know, you know, maybe if, um, I don't know, maybe if I end up bottoming out somewhere, I'll raise it a little more or something like that. I just want to find the absolute perfect ride height for this thing, but it's going to take some time. Um, so right now, yeah, we're good. The battery's actually hooked up, so I can show you what I wanted to show you. So if I open this up, I'll show you guys. Down here is all cleaned up. I got all the wiring done. What if I flick this little switch right here? All right, so I flick the switch down there. I'll show you guys exactly what happens. You might be able to see it already. But uh, my brother actually bought me some ground effects for the car like a while back for Christmas and I never had the time to put it in so I decided that I would put it in while I had the car all jacked up and you know taken apart so these are going to look really sick at night outside but they kind of light up the whole ground um, red. The lights are on right now so you can't see it too much but it's gonna do a pretty sweet job. But this thing is definitely very low now. I'm stoked. Um, my other concern is the camber because there's a, I'm not sure if you can tell, oh, you can tell. <laughs> there's a ridiculous amount of camber on these rear wheels, the front not as much. So I'm hoping raising it in the back some will get rid of some of that camber, but I am gonna have to make an adjustment. I believe there's a camber adjustment in the back. If not, I'm definitely gonna have to get a kit because I'm gonna kill tires. Um, where, while it looks really cool, cambered out like that, I really don't wanna kill tires as fast as this is going to. So I'm gonna try to adjust it a little bit and get it more towards Honda's specs, spec. Um, but for the meantime, I'll try to drive it like this. I think it's probably gonna handle really good with all this camber, but hopefully you guys enjoy the looks here. Um, this thing is absolutely sick. I can't believe it looks so good. Wow, yeah, it's snowing right now, or else I would totally take this thing for a test rip. Um, it's like snowing and raining, so we will see. Maybe I'll get to take it for a ride if uh, the snow clears up, but I don't know if it's going to. But for right now, I'm just gonna stare at it for a little while longer. <laughs> I might try to raise the back up too if I get bored, but yeah, I'm really, really liking how it came out. It's awesome. So I got the new IAT sensor plugged in and I just keyed it on, hooked up my ECU, got my data logging set up and it says our air temperature is at 46 PSI. So that's awesome. That means our IAT sensor is actually reading now and it no longer says minus 22. So we're gonna have to see exactly how that changes our tune, but we got that all set up. Keys on, everything seems to work, all my gauges. Um, everything's all cleaned up. This car is getting there. I just got to close up the back Do a couple more things back there with the battery, but we're looking uh, we are looking good and we're ready to go here Too bad there's snow on the ground So basically I just went ahead and raised up this side like three quarters of an inch. We're now sitting at right around 24 
It's hard to tell. It still looks like it's tucking until you get down here. And then you can see that it's pretty even with the front. Um, they both look pretty good, but from above it looks like the back's kind of tucking. I guess that's just the way it looks. Um, fine with me. Still looks pretty good. Might go up a little bit higher still, I think, just to give me a little bit more. Um, but uh, yeah, that's looking decent. I'm going to go ahead and maybe crank up the other side and then, I don't know, maybe I'll come back over here and crank up this side a little bit too. Um, I want this to be functional, so I'm just going to keep messing with it until I get it to a point where I think it looks good. And it still might settle from there and get a little bit lower once I drive it around. But the front, I think I might have to lift a little bit just because of the mud flap in front. I think that's probably going to hit on some stuff. And I'd like to keep the mud flap at least for now. Um, but yeah, it does look really good though. Um, it's super low still, but it's looking a little bit more tame now that I got the, uh, the rear lifted up just a little bit. But I think if I want to go up in the front, then I'm going to go up in the rear as well. But I might, uh, might just do the rear for now and take it for a little test drive and see if I can get out of my driveway and stuff like that. And if I can't, then I'll end up lifting the front up as well. So I got the other side raised up as well. And now the whole car is basically sitting at 24 inches uh, to each fender. This left rear is a little bit lower. It's like a quarter of an inch lower. But overall, the car is sitting pretty level, 24 inches to each fender. Um, it looks like it has a little bit of a, you know, more low in the rear. I don't think it's because of the quarter inch. I think it's just because that's the way these fenders look. If you get down like right here, it looks like it's got about the same wheel gap and uh, it might be a little bit higher in the back even. So I personally think it looks great like this, but I'm just worried about my ride in the front. I think it might be too low, but I think I'm going to end this video off with uh, starting the car and we'll see what our air fuels look like and all that stuff. And maybe I'll just back it out, let it warm up to OT and then uh, fire back off. Just, uh, you know, get things, get things moving in there, you know, make sure nothing's uh, getting gunked up. I got some fuel in here that I got to burn off. It's supposed to be nice this week, so look forward to some pulls and stuff like that. I'm hoping I can get out there and start tuning some more. Now with this new IIT sensor, just watch the video back and I realized that I said 46 pound or PSI, but that's not what I meant. I meant 46 degrees because now the IIT is functioning properly. Because I burned the other one out, I think I mentioned in a previous video. So I burned it out because I plugged the wrong plug into it. Uh, but I did make sure that it was right this time. And I did that by uh, checking. Because if you pull the plug on the IAT, throw one end of your meter to ground and throw the other end to the power wire for the plug that actually goes to the IAT, you should have a five volt reference, right? So it sends five volts into the sensor itself. And then it actually has a ground and the ground reads how much comes back to the ECU. And based on that, it can tell what the resistance is in the sensor. And it uses a calculation to determine because that resistance is gonna change based on your temperature. So that's how the IAT sensor works. So I probed the wires and I made sure that it was the right plug. I have our five volt reference, plugged it in. Now the car doesn't have a check light. Um, I haven't yet tried to start it yet, but I would like to soon, probably gonna eat dinner and then I'll fire the garage open try to start this thing and we'll see how well it runs but yeah that's pretty much going to cap it off for tonight i'm glad uh i'm happy with the progress that i made so you know we'll see but this thing's definitely looking sick i'm pretty pumped i can't wait to drive it and see how it handles all right so i'm going to go ahead and try to give this thing a nice start i just checked the oil uh, i still haven't started it since i changed the oil last um, I'm not going to drive it right now because there's still snow on the ground, but I am just going to fire it up and back it out. Just let it idle for a little bit, watch the air fuels, maybe make some adjustments once it gets to uh, operating temperature. But yeah, I just want to see overall how it runs. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the garage. Not much room for me to go here. Probably just open the other door. Yeah, let's see. Let's see if it fires up. All right, let's see how she does. And she's running. She's running, a little bit rough, but 
starting to get a little better see the air fuels come online here oh yeah fat rich still very rich let's see hopefully we get a little bit uh, leaner here soon looks like we're still running pretty rich with it a little bit got the air fuels to read a little bit leaner here I just pulled fuel out of the entire map because I do think that the uh, this air temperature sensor right here that's reading uh, 44 right now not sure if you can see it this guy right here 44 that was reading minus 22 so I think it was uh, you know the tune was compensating in, in a weird way so once I had it read the actual temperature it was way too rich because I was compensating like for minus 22 all the time so I think based on that, uh, the tune's cleaning up a little bit. The car's still not warmed up yet, but uh, I'm gonna have to probably pull some more fuel out of it once it warms up. You really shouldn't tune it until it warms up, but I didn't want to uh, dump too much fuel in there. So it should be good now. I'm just gonna let the car get all the way warmed up, and then I'll play around with the entire map a little bit more until I get it where I like it. And the next time I end up driving it, hopefully it uh, does well for me on the test drive. Add, add in 3% here, getting a little bit lean. Add another 2%. Try to keep it right around 14.7. Uh, it can go a little bit leaner at idle, but this car tends to misfire if I run it too lean at idle. But uh, yeah, it seems to be running really good. I'm liking it. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Um, yeah, this car's running great. Oh yeah. Awesome. A little bit lean now. Uh, it's it's fixing itself. Oil pressure looks good. Pretty good down there. Yep. Our uh, air fuels are starting to dip down a little bit. Uh, temperature is 49 degrees so we are heating up a little bit sensors working coolants at 137 so we're not quite up to that OT yet um, but yeah everything seems to be working but we got a little lean coming back so I think this uh, section of the map right here is too lean anything below a thousand rpms this thing's starting to fill up the garage with some smoke here I'm gonna have to <laughs> turn this thing off before I die all right guys I think I'm just gonna leave you off with this right here this thing sounds great yep this car is running mint can't wait to rip this thing again these new coilovers and the new stands all my new lights <laughs> I'm loving it can't wait cannot wait hopefully you guys enjoyed the video if you did go ahead and give it a like and uh, subscribe definitely see some polls coming soon um, just gotta brush the tune up in this thing I think we're gonna be good to go uh, we're gonna be back better than ever now with our new air intake sensor and all kinds of stuff like that so yeah I'm pumped this thing should hopefully take a corner now but uh, yeah thanks again for watching everybody Peace out.